Hi everybody, my name is Maddie. I'm an animal keeper here at the Woodland Park Zoo and I'm one of the keepers that gets to take care of the Northern Trail section of the zoo. And I'm gonna talk to you guys today about one of my favorite animals to work with, which is the North American River Otter. So here at the zoo, we have three North American River Otters. We have Ziggy, who's swimming around behind me and he is our male. And we have two females whose names are Valkyrie and Piper. So Valkyrie and Ziggy are the parents of Piper and she was one of four pups that were born here two years ago in March of 2019. And her three other siblings have since gone on to start lives at other zoos. And Piper will eventually move on to a different facility as well because otter pups do not live with their parents past adulthood. Our North American River otters all look fairly similar. Their colors are all very similar and they're all right around the same size as well. So luckily keepers have their personalities to look to to kind of tell the difference between all three of them. So Ziggy, our male, is definitely the most laid-back, easygoing otter. He has a very sweet personality, whereas Valkyrie is a little bit stronger. She's more of a tough individual, and Piper is definitely taking after her mom. She tends to be a little bit more stubborn than the other two as well. So North American River otters are in the mustelid family, which means they're related to weasels, badgers, um, and ferrets. And uh, these guys are native to North America, as their name suggests. They are found all throughout Canada and through much of the United States as well. They are found in and around different waterways like rivers, lakes, and even coastal shorelines. We actually have some North American River otters living in the Puget Sound right here in Washington, as well as throughout the state. And they are classified as semi-aquatic, which means that they uh, spend about as much time on land as they do in the water. And they have a lot of really awesome adaptations that allow them to succeed in both environments and make them really powerful, graceful swimmers. So river otters have a really long, powerful, muscular tail. It's about one third of their body length and it acts as a rudder. So they're able to switch directions really quickly in the water and they're able to swim very gracefully and propel themselves very quickly through the water. They also have webbed toes. So each toe has webbing in, beneath, in between it, um, kind of like a frog's foot. And they also have claws on each toe that give them some extra traction when they're on land and allows them to grip onto slippery prey like fish. River otters also have a very thick um, water repellent fur and they develop this fur at about two months of age. So they're born with very soft fuzzy fur and then they develop this thicker, more water resistant fur that's actually able to trap a layer of air in between the outer layer of fur and their skin. So they're able to keep their skin completely dry when they're swimming, uh, which allows them to stay warm even when swimming in pretty cold bodies of water. Otters are also able to completely close uh, their noses and their ear canals so that water cannot enter their body through those spaces and that helps them um, stay comfortably submerged underwater so they can swim underwater for long periods of time without coming up. They're actually able to stay underwater completely submerged for around eight minutes. Um, right around there is what um, we've observed with river otters. They also have very thick, long whiskers, kind of like a cat. Um, and these whiskers help them navigate uh, murky or dark waters, um, which is helpful because a lot of rivers are not crystal clear, not always as clear as this water that we have on exhibit. Uh, so they're able to see or feel where they are, even if they can't see. It also helps since they are very active and hunting um, when it's darker outside. So these guys are not completely nocturnal, but they are primarily nocturnal. Uh, so they're more active in the mornings, at night, and then um, really late in the day. North American river otters are very opportunistic um, when it comes to diet. They are powerful hunters in the land as they are in the water. They catch most of their food in the water, uh, so most of their diet consists of fish, which I think most people imagine when they think of river otters. They'll also eat amphibians, so they've been known to dig up hibernating frogs and turtles even. Um, they'll eat different shellfish. Um, they actually also help combat invasive species, so river otters have been known to eat carp and zebra mussels, which are big invasive species in the United States. They're also able to catch small mammals on the land, so they'll eat small mammals as well as birds even. And they've sometimes been observed eating um, some aquatic plants in the water as well. So here at the zoo, we're able to mimic that diet pretty closely and we offer four different kinds of fish. We offer a ground meat diet every day and occasionally they'll get some produce snacks as well. So our otters really like to eat apples, um, yams, carrots, and melons. It's not an everyday thing, but it can be a really fun thing to do for them every once in a while. Due to this diet, otters are, no, are um, known as what is called an indicator species, um, and it's primarily because of what they eat and where they live. 
So um, this means that by studying otter populations, we can make some pretty strong inferences about the ecosystem and the environment that they live in. So um, they eat a lot of different small mammals and they, they eat um, fish that would not be able to thrive in a waterway that's not clean. So one of the biggest threats facing river otters is polluted waterways. And a big part of that is because it dramatically decreases the amount of prey that can live in a water, in a body of water, if that water is not clean. So by um, knowing that there is a population of otters in an area, we can really strongly infer that that waterway is clean and able to support an abundance of prey. River otters also sleep and raise their young in dens. So here at the zoo, we provide nest boxes for our otters, but out in nature, otters actually take advantage of dens dug by other species, such as beavers. So they uh, live and sleep in dens that they've kind of hijacked from beavers uh, near the water, and they like dens that have more than one entrance, so they have kind of a safety exit, as well as a way to get directly into the water where mom can give um, her pups swimming lessons. So swimming comes pretty naturally to otters, but they do still need to be be taught. And so in the same way as fish, uh, presence of river otters can also indicate that there's healthy populations of other species such as beavers that are digging dens, giving otters these opportunities to raise their young in them. River otters are currently at a pretty stable point. Their population is pretty stable um, throughout their native range. Um, their numbers are not actively increasing or decreasing, but have been the same for uh, quite a few years. But um, that doesn't mean they don't need our help. They are um, overall listed as least concern, so river otters are not an endangered species, but they have been declared locally endangered or extinct in some states where they used to be found abundant. Some of the biggest threats facing these guys is urbanization, so overall loss of habitat um, and space, and also polluted waterways. So um, there are luckily a lot of ways that we can help river otters just by not even leaving our house. Um, that looks like conserving your water usage, so not using more water than we really need to use, which can be hard, but it can be done, um, and avoiding use of uh, chemical fertilizers and pesticides in your yard, which ultimately go on to pollute our waterways. So the best way that we can conserve these otters is by uh, conserving our water usage and by keeping our waters clean. Thank you so much for joining me and Ziggy today. I hope that you learned a little bit about river otters and had a good time doing so. Please visit the zoo anytime.